And this is my life with albinism. Now this is my life with albinism. And this is my life with albinism. Welcome back to another episode of Life with Albinism podcast. Today we have a special and a new guest who has never been on our show before, Eunice. I will let her introduce herself. Hi guys, I'm Eunice. (laughs) Okay, so now before we get to why you're here, tell us about yourself. Tell, Tell the people what you do for a living, let them know your social medias, where can they find you, where can they follow you, and what do you do for a living, and how has living with albinism been for you? Um, hi, guys. So I'm Eunice, like I said. I have albinism. I'm originally from the Congo, DRC, but I live in London, UK. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and YouTube just type me Eunice and yeah you'll find me there I work in communications and PR and stuff like that and uh, living with urbanism has so far been interesting I've just entered adulthood so we'll see how that goes (laughs) so now when you said you work in communications what exactly does that mean like what exactly do you do well, just like social media marketing and things like that and personal social media and things for companies. Okay, so you you do like social media marketing for different companies. Yeah. And how do you like that thus far? Uh, it's okay. Um, I can work from home, which is good because I don't like leaving my house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> now let's get into why you're here so you've been following us you've been following life with albinism we want to thank you for that we love the support and you ended up actually reaching out to me directly and just saying hey i've seen your podcast i like what you do i want to join so tell us how do you feel about our life with albinism podcast and what brought you to contact us to say hey i would love to join this show well because um I guess at some point I was uh, looking for a community of people, persons with albinism as well. And I came across your Instagram and then I followed you and then you followed me back. Uh, that was around 2018, I think. I don't remember. Oh, wow. But yeah. But yeah, I just find it interesting to hear different perspectives of people. And of you, you usually talk to people who live in America. So, and I hadn't um, seen you talk to anyone outside of America with albinism so I thought why shouldn't why can't I be with us so yeah that's why perfect 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 so tell us this so what is your story like with albinism how did you grow up how did it affect your life positive or negative what has it been for you like what was your upbringing like and how has albinism been in your in your growing up process um honestly it's in my family unit, it's actually quite great. Um, I have a very good and supportive and protective family. But when I go to the outside, that's a bit, that's when it gets a bit hard. But um, in my family, my mom says when I was born, she wasn't shocked that I had albinism because she has cousins who have albinism. So she was expecting it somewhat. Um, my dad's side, not so much, you know, um, Africans, they're not very open-minded sometimes in in that sense um but yeah so it it just became difficult when I went to school specifically when I went to Europe because I was born in Africa in in Congo and then I came here when I was like six or seven and so adjusting to that culture shock and then on top of everything I also had albinism it wasn't the best time um kids as they say can be quite cruel so um but yeah, at home, I'm quite protected and encouraged. But on the outside, it's a bit hard. But now that I'm a, a little bit older, I deal with it a lot more, um, like better with everything. Okay, so growing up, um, you grew up in, the, in Africa? No, I was born there and I came to the UK when I was seven. Okay, okay, so you grew up mostly in the UK. Yeah. Were there a lot of albinism people around you, maybe in your city, in your neighborhood, in your schools? Not at all. 
wow. not yeah I was usually the only one I remember at school um there was one girl with albinism because I went to an all-girls school there was one girl with albinism um when I was um when I just got into high school but I remember in my primary school there was no one it was just me um yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I didn't grow up with any other people with albinism. But my mom's friend, childhood best friend, she has albinism. So she's like the only person with albinism I knew growing up. <laughs> okay. So you only yes. had one friend with albinism growing up? No, that was my mom's friend. That was oh, your best. mom's friend. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so you wasn't even able to make like really close of a relationship with her, I'm assuming, because she must have been much older than you. Yeah, she's my mom's age, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you so know, she... For your advice. age, there wasn't anyone? No, no one. Wow. Not even at any of the schools you've attended? No. Wow. So, yeah. <clears throat> let's take a moment to analyze what that was like. What, what was it like to live in this city, a heavily populated city like London, yeah. and go to a school where you never saw anyone else with albinism growing up didn't see someone with albinism going through mm -hmm. your neighborhoods didn't see someone with albinism what is it like to kind of feel like you're the only person here with albinism honestly it was quite lonely but because I was quite young I was quite naive so I didn't really um it didn't really affect affect me in that sense seeing that I didn't see any representation of myself I got the bullying part because I was bullied quite a lot but um it affected me because yeah I would go to say white people I would look like them and sound like them but I wouldn't act like them and then I would go to black people and I would act like them but I didn't look like them so I was rejected from both sides so finding a good group of friends was very hard so yeah it, it was quite lonely in that sense because I was rejected from both sides you see I I, I kind of had somewhat of an opposite effect like for me there were of course there were the people who bullied me and made fun of me but then there was also those people who like purposely wanted to be your friend just because you were different so mm. for me I had a lot of <clears throat> I, I had to a lot of times I had to do a lot of filtering because so yeah. many people were so friendly to me because they just felt as though, oh, he's different. Let's be nice to him. Let's talk to him as opposed to genuinely wanting to be my friend. So for you, it was like you were rejected from both sides. So you had a situation where a lot of people didn't want to be your friend. Whereas for me, I guess here in America, or let me not say in America because everyone's experience is different. My experience was a lot of people purposely wanted to be my friend kind of out of sympathy because it's yeah I was the albino guy you know what I mean <clears throat> so but, now uh, go yeah. ahead sorry carry on no no you I didn't mean to cut you off no because I'm saying that it's not like they didn't want to be my friend it's just like you know kids right they're afraid of yeah. what's different so they sort of kept you at arm's length but it was um the bullying was just from a very select few group of people or maybe there was more, but I just wasn't aware of it, um, which I guess is a good thing. Um, but yeah, they were just more afraid, so they kept me at arm's length. But yeah, but eventually I found my <clears throat> tribe and was and I found when we grew up a little bit more, I found people who were more welcoming and a lot kinder. So I eventually made friends. Okay. But that's so to have people who wanted to be your friend even if it was out of sympathy at least they tried to be kind that's a positive so did you eventually meet people with albinism in, in your area like did you ever like even in your teenage years and your adult years did you eventually meet a friend with albinism well at my school there was one girl she was a little bit more older than I was and she had albinism but like we didn't really have much to talk about she was going for her own things so it's not like she 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 didn't try to mentor me or anything like that and no I didn't really meet anyone with albinism but my brother recently got married and his wife's family she has two siblings with albinism so now I have siblings um family members with albinism so that's a oh, wow yeah that's a good thing 
Yeah. That's good. Yeah, see, <clears throat> for me, um, I didn't come across albinism that much in my in my early childhood, mm-hmm. but I would say in adult years, I came across it a lot, right? Yeah. Um, but in childhood, not really. You know, like I don't think there's ever been another kid with albinism at any of the schools I've been to until mm-hmm. I went to college. Once I came to college, then I finally saw like, oh, there's one other person with albinism. At my school during the time that I was there, well, my college during mm-hmm. the time that I was there, there was two other people with albinism. So oh. that was pretty cool. Well, at uni, I went to a very white university. There was no one with albinism, let alone that many black people. So yeah, there was no chance of that. Wow. Wow. So, <clears throat> and now, so at this, at this point, having family members with albinism, how, how is that? It's pretty cool. It's nice that I'm not alone anymore. I have teammates. <laughs> so I have people in my corner. So it's quite cool. But what I like about my family is that it was never really emphasized that I was different. They just treated me normally. It was more on the outside that people made a bigger deal out of it. And I really appreciate that, that people, my siblings, my mom, um, just treated me like any other normal child. So in my head, I had albinism, but I'm still a Black woman. That's how I always saw myself. But then people on the outside would be like, well, how are you black? You know, that was a whole other issue. (laughs) (laughs) So now let me ask you this. As of right now, where are you in your journey with albinism in terms of have you gotten to that point where you Mm -hmm. fully accept it? You're confident about it. You embrace it. You love it. You don't you don't you don't mind if it's shown. Or are you at that point where you're still crossing over to getting to a comfort level and a confidence level with it um that's a good question actually I was thinking about it the other day um I guess I'm old enough intellectually I I understand it more because when I was younger it used to scare me the word albinism and albino so I never used to like that but I, I get it now a lot more. And I've, I've gotten to a point where I guess I'm accepting it now and I'm embracing it. And I understand that representation matters and we don't have much representation. And when we do have representation, it's not in a positive way. It's always like in a mocking way sort of thing. And it's really motivated me to try to change that as much as possible through my platform. So yeah, oh, you I'm have accepting. a platform. Talk about that. What is uh, that platform? Is it? A- I'm trying to build a platform. <laughs> so Talk it's just me, um, just my YouTube channel. But I'm trying to start um a platform where I talk about uh albinism and just disabilities in general because I feel like it, it there aren't many that focus on the positive sides of it. So I want to celebrate all these aspects of people with albinism and persons with disabilities and I don't know if you know but International Albinism Awareness Day is coming up yep. and yeah I'm trying to find different people with albinism to come together and make like an information video about it or something so I feel like that would be a good way to kick off what I'm trying to build but even just with my just normal YouTube channel and my Instagram and stuff I just want to show a positive light on albinism it's not something to be afraid of it's not some we're not people to feel sorry for so yeah that's just my that's what I want to do and even if it just reaches one or two people I'll be okay with that that could be impactful enough and listen I'm all here for your support if you want me to participate in your albinism awareness day or send you a video or even promote it or share it on my page I will do all of that for you I'm all for inclusion and helping all of my brothers and sisters with albinism push their platforms to the forefront and also I've actually written a book um about a little girl with albinism so that should be coming maybe around autumn oh what's the book called and where can people find it well it's not published yet I'm trying to illustrate it I'm working with an illustrator at the moment so Hopefully in a in a month or so we'll 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 be ready to like on our way to releasing it and publishing it. 
so oh, yeah that's good that's good and that and that's creative you know that's different that's creative it's unique you know mm-hmm. I, I i really think that that's a good that's a really good idea and i just want <clears throat> to pick up on one particular thing that you stated we're stating was that you want albinism to be more in the forefront because there's not a lot of representation of albinism yeah this has got to be something i must have said a hundred times on my platform and i'll stick to it we truly don't have a lot of representation of albinism in the mainstream media in the mainstream world there's not a lot of albinism there's not a lot of athletes with albinism there's not Mm -hmm. a lot of actors with albinism there's not Mm -hmm. a lot of musicians with albinism there's not a lot of models with albinism yes you do have a few here and there yes Mm -hmm. we know us as people with albinism we know of the sean rosses we know of the deandras we know of uh people like brother ali and people like um the guy from black lightning he goes by the stage name of crondon we know of these individuals, but just look at that. That's four people I named amongst <laughs> two different realms. Yeah. And I want to see it more. I want to be <laughs> able to one day say, hey, there's a man with albinism in the NBA, in the NFL. There's a there's a man or woman with albinism who is an actor and not just known for their albinism, but yeah. known for their major acting roles. And even with mm-hmm. modeling, I want it to be able to get to the point where it's a famous model with albinism, not and not with that title on it, but just, yeah. hey, this is a famous model. Mm-hmm. Instead of it being, that's the model with albinism. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, and I want to see more of it. I want to see more of it, not just one or two or, you know, because think about it. If I said, if we were to sit here and think about all the famous uh, Latino or Latina actors mm-hmm. and actresses, the list can go on for days. It wouldn't be yeah. one or two. If we wanted to talk about famous, um, let's say Hispanic uh, athletes, there would be a long list. It wouldn't just be one or two, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I want to see for albinism. I wanted to, I want us to get beyond the, that one or two people that you can mention. I want it to be more normalized. I want to see people with albinism in everyday television. Yeah. You no. Know, exactly. I'm sorry. Go go ahead. I was kind of on a rain. You go ahead. I I absolutely agree with you. And when I when I'm thinking about this platform, that's the vision that I have as well that I'm trying to build. I want to normalize it as well. And the thing that really breaks my heart is that you know people always talk about diversity and inclusion, but then they never include include people with albinism. And it's like people, black people with albinism, do exist as well, and they are black and they deserve the right to also be represented. I was talking to my mom the other day, like um, we were we were listening to like a podcast or something or a video about a girl talk, a black woman talking about um, how growing up she never had any dolls w- that, that were black. And then I remember asking my mom like, <clears throat> growing up, I never had any dolls that had albinism. And she was like, yeah, but you had white ones. I'm like, I know, but <laughs> I'm not a white woman. So I want that as well. And I know there's a doll with albinism, um, um, modeled after a little girl, I think. I saw that on Instagram somewhere. But I actually want an actual Barbie of a doll with albinism. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I completely agree with you. Yeah, it's like it's like we need that inclusion. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Because yeah. <clears throat> there's, and, and I'll be honest with you, I honestly feel like albinism is probably the least seen uh, condition out of all of them. Like I yeah. see... Um, I'm not sure what the technical term is for dwarfism. I'm not sure if that's the technical term or not. So I'm not trying to offend nobody, yeah. but I believe it's dwarfism. I, like people- I see more of that in the media than I do albinism. Yeah. They have reality shows for that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They have a reality show for almost every disability. There's a reality show for people with giantism, for people with dwarfism, yeah. for people with obesity, for people with mm-hmm. I- anything. You know what I mean? Like I- any and every other disability is shown except albinism you know what I mean and that's got to change eventually and I Mm -hmm. want my platform to help push that as well I want to eventually be part of the reason as to why albinism is more into the media more into the mainstream and accepted not just oh that's the albino actor but hey that's an awesome actor he happens to have albinism you know what I mean yeah 
but we'll, we'll get there eventually if there eventually. are people like you <laughs> out there you know you'll inspire uh, people to do something and it's also no and last question are you going to the um albinism conference for noah there's an albinism conference i did not know about that <laughs> what do you know about that? noah no oh my goodness okay so i am also a NOAA task force member and what mm -hmm. we and what NOAA is is the National Albinism Organization um mm -hmm. so they represent not only albinism but also hyperpigmentation so it's yeah. so NOAA the acronym is National Organization for Albinism and Hyperpigmentation I'm one of their task force members to help uh spread the awareness of NOAA and all the different things that they're trying to do. So they're trying to pretty much do a lot of outreach for people with albinism. And yeah. every year they have a national conference, a national albinism conference held in Orlando, Florida. So we're definitely gonna be there in attendance. So I can kind of send you some information about it if you're interested. Well, I'm in the UK, it would be a lot, it would be a bit hard to, to yeah. get make it there but yeah i'll definitely That's a long flight so it'll be a long flight for you yeah i'll definitely look more into it and see what they're all about thanks for telling me about that i had no idea definitely definitely yeah. well i really enjoy having this conversation with you i enjoyed having you on my podcast so before we exit out mm -hmm. tell us one more time your social medias where people can find you and please say what your platform is so people can find that account on instagram or facebook or wherever it may be okay guys i'm you this you can find me on instagram and youtube and tiktok as well just type me eunice so m-e-e-u-n-i-c-e -E -E, so me eunice and my platform is called ability spotlight and it will be up and running very soon so yeah okay. All right. Thank you so much for joining my show. Another so great much. episode of Life with Albinism. <laughs> we thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure to meet you.